This is a Guardians of the Galaxy Star-Lord helmet. Originally, it was a plastic 3D print, but it has been turned into a one-of-a-kind metal cosplay prop. What started off as just plastic parts were given a metal layer using an electroplating process. It is definitely one of the most difficult builds I've done so far, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's go. What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. The first step of this build is printing the 3D files. I purchased these files from the DO3D website and we'll have a link in the description below. I uploaded the files into Cura to size and orientate the helmet to my liking. I print all the parts in 0.12 millimeter layer height to reduce the amount of post-processing I have to do. Printing at this layer height almost triples the print time, but it is well worth it for the time and effort I will save from sanding. I used PLA material and printed the pieces on my Ender 5 Plus and Ender 3 S1. The main portion of the helmet had to be printed on my Ender 5 Plus because my Ender 3's build plate was not big enough. I prefer using my Ender 3 when I can because it has a direct drive extruder, but sometimes it's necessary to use my Ender 5 Plus when I have bigger parts. When printing is finished, I take the parts off the print bed and remove the supports. It's important to deburr the parts at this stage using a nippers and I also use a soldering iron to further smooth out the edges. Unfortunately, this next step is not very fun, but it's probably the most important part of any build, which is sanding. I sand the surface of the helmet with a variety of sandpaper from 150 to 320 grit. It's necessary for me to take my time here to remove all the imperfections during the printing process. If I don't remove them now, they will show up later. Now that the most tedious and labor intensive part of the build is over, the helmet is ready to be covered with filler primer. This is followed by a repetitive sequence of sanding and spraying until you have an almost perfectly smooth part or until the part is smooth to your own personal liking. I use increasingly fine sandpaper every time a layer of filler primer is applied all the way up to 2000 grit. Eventually, I have a very smooth part. Now it's time to paint. I mix electrically conductive copper paint with acetone and airbrush flow improver. This will serve as the base conductive layer for the copper in the electroplating process. I take one part conductive paint and mix it with two parts acetone. I then add a few drops of the flow improver and give it a good mix. I also put a couple drops of the flow improver into the airbrush cup and then add the paint. I use my airbrush to spray the paint on my part in even layers until all the surfaces are covered. Always remember to use a respirator when spraying. I'll be using an acidic copper electrolyte that I created using copper sulfate crystals I bought from Amazon. I can make a separate in-depth tutorial video on how I made this solution from scratch, so if you'd like to see that, please let me know in the comments down below. I clean both of my copper anodes using steel wool. I want to remove as much oxidation and dirt as possible. I wrap each anode with large coffee filters and then insert them into homemade polypropylene sleeves. This helps keep the electrolyte as clean as possible during the plating process. Now before adding the helmet to the bath, it needs to be thoroughly cleaned. I use an electrolyte cleaner followed by distilled water to clean the part. I pat the helmet dry using a paper towel and microfiber cloth. Next, I wrap the conductive print in thin copper wire and suspend it on a copper rod between the two copper anodes in the bath. I connect the positive pole of my power supply to the copper anodes and the negative to the copper rod. I set the current on my power supply to zero amps and turn the voltage all the way up. I adjust the current in small increments until I reach my calculated value based on the part's surface area that I want to electroplate. After about 8 hours, I take the helmet out of the bath and it is coated in a very nice copper layer. The longer a part is left in the bath, the thicker the copper layer will be. I also made sure to check on the part and reposition it a few times during the plating process to make sure that the thin copper wires do not solder themselves to the part. After all the parts are plated, they are sanded and buffed to enhance the shine of the copper. I start with 1200 grit sandpaper and work my way all the way up to 2000 grit. I also use some extra fine steel wool to help eliminate any plating shadows and burn spots. After sanding is done, I use a buffing wheel to give the helmet an even shinier finish. If you're using a buffing wheel on electroplated parts, do not hold the pieces in one spot too long because the buffing wheel could burn through the electroplated layer. I had this happen to me in a few spots on this helmet and although it was very frustrating, this is my first try at this and I'm learning from my mistakes. At this point, I've got a really nice copper helmet, but I would like to add some nickel or chrome finishing as well. My first attempt at this was using a galvanic brush and copy chrome electrolyte. I got the copy chrome from Caswell, and although it went on the helmet okay, the finish was super dull even after cleaning it. I'm pretty sure the reason it didn't turn out is because I made some mistakes somewhere, but I'm learning as I go and it is what it is. A few days after applying the copy chrome, it almost started to rub off and left the parts that I electroplated super patchy. I tried going 
over the parts again with the galvanic brush, but I didn't like how dull the finish was, so I decided to pivot. Instead of more electroplating, I tried using a chrome paint pen for the parts I wanted to make silver. After a bit of time fooling around with that, it still wasn't giving me the finish that I wanted, so I decided once more to try something different. For the portions of the helmet I want to make silver, I'm going to use this chrome paint from Ravel. This paint is incredibly hard to find and this little five ounce can cost over $35, but in a minute, you'll see why. I used frog tape and some elastic tape from Tamiya to mask off the portions of the helmet I didn't want to paint. After applying the chrome, I removed the tape and I'm sure now you can see why this paint is so expensive. It is single-handedly the best chrome paint I've ever used and has the mirror-like qualities of actual chrome plating. I attached all the small individual pieces to the main helmet using contact cement. I used some red and chrome window tint to create the lenses for the helmet. I traced the shape of the eyes on the window tint, cut them out, and used some super glue to attach the lenses to the helmet's eye sockets. And after all that work, this was the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.